Good afternoon, everyone. It's 4 p.m., so I'd like to open the workshop. Thank you for your patience. I will now begin the workshop. Good afternoon, morning, and good evening. Welcome to the third Greenhouse Gas Inventory System Training Workshop. I'm Youngin Cha from the United Nations Office for Sustainable Development located in Incheon, Korea. It's my honor to moderate at the today's workshop. Uh, let me check the first. Can you hear me well? Yes. 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 Good, good. Yes, good. yes, yes. Thank uh, you. I can yes. hear you. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I can hear you. This workshop is co-organized by Thailand Greenhouse Gas Management Organization. Greenhouse Gas Inventory and Research Center of Korea and UN UNOSD. Due to the COVID-19, we have organized the workshop through the Zoom this year. I know that the time is not a perfect, the most suitable for you. So I am very thankful for your participation in this workshop. Also, thanks to the, in, your interest, there are more registrations than we expected. For this reason, this meeting is providing Facebook live streaming service through the TGO's Facebook. The link is already shared via email, and you could find the link through the UNOSD website. Before moving into the workshop, I'd like to take some time to remind you the functions of the Zoom. Presenters can share your screen for your presentation by clicking on the green share screen button. When, you, when, when the presenters are speaking, I kindly ask other non-speakers to uh, refrain from speaking. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the chat box. And if you wish to speak out during the Q&A or discussion session, please use raise your hand function. If you look at the bottom of the screen, reaction, you can find the raise hand button. So after they receive the permission to speak, unmute yourself and speak, please. And if you have any questions, comments, or technical difficulties, please feel free to leave it in the chat box. With these elements in mind, I'd like to open the workshop with the opening remark. The first remark is from Mr. Chun Yu Park, who is head of office. He has joined the office last year, and before that, he has served as Korean government for almost 30, 30 years, starting at the mid-level management, rising to the rank of the Vice Minister of Environment. Please welcome Mr. Park. Okay, thank you, Young and Choi. Good afternoon to Asia Pacific and good morning to Euro, Middle East and Africa, distinguished speakers, partners, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third Greenhouse Gas Inventory System Training Workshop. My name is Chung Gyu Park, Head of Office for the U UN Office for Sustainable and Development, UNOSD. First of all, I would like to welcome each and every one of you for joining us for this important and timely event. Despite virtual format of this workshop, lots of participants are joining us from different time zones, and I'm happy to express my sincere gratitude for your presence. I would like to thank the uh, Thailand Greenhouse Gas Management Organization, TGO, and the Greenhouse Gas Inventory and uh, Research Center of Korea, GIR, for their continued and valuable support and partnership. My special thanks go to Mr. Mr. Kia Chai Maitri Wong. Am I, I'm sorry if I sound you know, wrong, but please understand me. Executive Director of the TGO for dedicating his time frame, time from his busy schedule to welcome us today. Distinguished participants, today we face a climate crisis like no other. In 2019, the global fossil fuel emissions totaled a record number, and the Asia Pacific was, you know, was responsible for half of it. 
the last 10 years are known as the hottest decade in history, and 2020, last year, was one of the warmest years on record. Despite the temporary emission fall brought by the economic slowdown of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are still on the way to the devastation of our climate system. The COVID-19 crisis has pushed more than 70 million people into extreme poverty. It increased the number of jobs lost and aggravated global hunger and painful inequality. Women, children, and vulnerable groups, including older people, those with disabilities, migrants, and refugees have been hit hardest. Unlike our expectations caused by the restrictions uh, or our responses on the pandemic, deforestation, pollution, and investments in fossil fuels have continued. In the face of massive setbacks caused by the health crisis, going back to normal is not enough. Recovery from pandemic must be greener, inclusive, and more resilient with a special focus on climate crisis. With a decade of action upon us, the international community should accelerate the global efforts on climate action to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Science tells us that economics should be transformed to ensure global natural emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050 and cut emissions by 45% by 2030 compared with 2010 levels. This is more important when considering the overarching impact of SD13 climate action on all 17 SDGs. Climate change is closely linked with poverty, SDG1, food, SDG2, health, SDG3, water, SDG6, energy, SDG7, infrastructure, SDG9, cities, S11, and oceans and terrestrial ecosystem. SDG 14 and 15. Scaling up ambition on GHG's reduction is a prerequisite of all other sustainable development goals. Our future, future development path demands bold leadership and a more commitment to fight climate change, decarbonize the economies, and deliver a breakthrough on adaptation. Nationally determined contributions and issues required by the Paris Agreement are considered the most important vehicles to tackling climate change. A national greenhouse gas inventory is the cornerstone of our country's ambitious formulation and related reporting obligations. In this regard, assisting member states to strengthen their national inventory mechanisms remains a top priority for our office when OSD. Colleagues and distinguished guests, this year's workshop is dedicated to reflecting on the lessons learned, challenges, and experience faced by countries whilst developing their energies with the national greenhouse gas inventory systems. Through the presentation and discussions, I hope that this workshop will serve as a platform for all of us to learn from each other. I believe capacity building happens through repeated learning. I'm happy to say that UN OSD will keep organizing this kind of inventory training workshop and your participation will be prioritized for the next year's in-person workshop. With that, I expect all of you have a fruitful and productive discussion for today's workshop. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Park. Now we have Mr. Kachai Marchul Wong currently served as the executive director of TGO. Prior to this role, Ms. Kachai worked in the energy industry with more than 38 years of experience. Good afternoon, distinguished participants, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining the third greenhouse gas inventory training workshop. On behalf of the Ministry of National Resources and Environment, the loyal Thai government, I'm pleased to welcome you to this online workshop 
I'm very glad to acknowledge high level participants and delegates for your participation. I would also like to warmly welcome representatives from government, non-government experts, academia, youth, and all other stakeholders who are interested in the area of sustainable development goals, number 13, on climate action. As I serve as the executive director of Thailand Greenhouse Gas Management Organization, or TGO, since April 2020, I have been well informed on the Greenhouse Gas Inventory System Workshop, which TGO was honored to be a part of 2018 and 2020 workshop hosted in Bangkok. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 pandemic situation, we will consider to have online for this workshop. However, I'm sure that we are also reaching out many new networking. The current global warming and climate change crisis has shown us the crucial contribution to share responsibilities for most countries of the world under Paris Agreement. Recently, the United States, which is the second rank of top greenhouse gas con contributors, officially rejoined the Paris Agreement to achieve nationally determined contribution or NDC, which are the heart of the Paris Agreement, the importance of science technologies and innovation is the principle and tool to help to achievement of this long-term reducing get greenhouse gas emission goal. In addition, up to date, greenhouse gas inventory data, mitigation measure must be conducted continuously, systematically and transparency, as well as national policy must be up to date and accordant with the current situation that enables greenhouse gas management to achieve the reduction of target. Moreover, natural resources, technologies, and innovation to reduce greenhouse gas emission, capture or remove carbon must be tangible, providing benefit to the life on Earth, environment, and save our planet. For this workshop, this is a great opportunity for new normal life and work that allows us to exchange knowledge, share experiences, a lesson learned in preparing and implementing NDCs. Not only in the Asia Pacific countries, but there are also the latest experiences from the worldwide to recognize in the same way and achieve the same goal. I believe that we are in the right place and the right time. Together, let us accelerate the exchange of ideas and discussion. I'm confident that you will find new ideas to sustain your effort in support of the climate action. Finally, I wish you a successful online workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kachai. We have over but, to the room to you. Thank you, Mr. Kachai, with warm welcome. And um, this ends the opening, and I'd like to toss the mic to Ms. Yu Jung Kim, who is senior development management expert, UNOSD, to present on SDGs and the climate action. Thank you, Young Un. Uh, let me share my screen. Oh, Youngun, I I'm not able to share my screen because uh, someone else is sharing. Okay, great. Now it works. Can you see my screen? Yes, very well. Uh, 
Um, okay, sorry about the delay. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, before we dive into the NDCs and um, greenhouse gas inventories, I would like to briefly introduce the perspective of sustainable development and the linkages between the sustainable development goals and climate action. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted in 2015 as a roadmap to a better and more sustainable future for all to be achieved by the year 2030. The 2030 Agenda has 17 sustainable development goals and 169 targets that deal with the most pressing issues facing mankind today. And the Paris Agreement was also adopted in the same year with the goal to keep the increase in global temperature to well below two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Since their adoption, the SDGs and the Paris Agreement have become the two most important pillars in discussing the relationship between humans and nature. Now, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals address a wide variety of the global challenges we face, including poverty, inequality, environmental degradation, peace, and justice. And one of the most important characteristics of SDGs is that they are all interconnected and interdependent. Of the 17 goals, climate change, of course, has its own goal. SDG 13 specifically requires urgent action to address climate change and its impacts. And the targets under SDG 13 include strengthening resilience and adaptive capacity to climate related hazards and natural disasters. Integrating climate change measures into national policies, strategies and planning, and improving education, awareness raising, and human and institutional capacity. Since climate change and sustainable development are fundamentally connected, climate change is also mentioned in SDGs beyond SDG 13. For example, target 1.5 demands building the resilience of the poor and those in vulnerable situations and reducing their exposure and vulnerability to climate related extreme events. Also target 2.4 addresses sustainable food production and resilient agriculture practices that strengthen capacity for adaptation to climate change. And 11 point B is about building cities and human settlements that adopt and implement policies and plans towards mitigation and adaptation to climate change. And lastly, the indicator 12.8.1 uh, addresses climate change education in terms of responsible consumption and production. In addition to these, the targets and indicators that do not clearly state climate change are also closely linked to climate change. As you can see in this chart, climate change have impacts on most of the sustainable development goals. Each rectangle to the right of the relevant SDG logo represents a target. The target in red means that they are, there is published evidence of impacts. For example, climate change impacts may change the distribution of disease vectors and worsen disaster related health risks under SDG 3. Climate change drives water shortages that reduce access to clean drinking water and sanitation under SDG 6. Climate change may also impact the productivity of agricultural lands, causing malnutrition as well as loss of livelihoods and prosperity. Climate change also undermines efforts to achieve justice and equality, especially gender equality. Climate change poses a major stress for all ecosystems, obviously. The gray rectangle in the chart means absence of evidence, and that does not necessarily mean absence of an impact. 
Since climate change can undermine sustainable development, well-designed mitigation and adaptation responses can support the achievement of SDGs. Then does it work the other way as well? Yes, it does. The implementation of certain SDGs would significantly contribute to achieving SDG 13 and the goals of the Paris Agreement. Now, this chart shows the synergies and trade-offs between climate action and the targets across all SDGs. The color of the rectangle presents the strength of an interaction with green being synergy and brown meaning trade-off. Many of the targets on food, water, and energy are indivisible with climate action. Progress on several targets concerning sustainable consumption and production under SDG 12 can advance climate action by reducing emissions related to wastes and production. Climate action can improve global health outcomes as it can reduce local pollutions, especially air pollution that harm billions of people every day. And I think addressing air pollution can be an excellent area for creating co-benefits, especially in Asia, as we have a lot of densely populated emerging markets in the region. The interactions between climate action and SDGs may not be always positive, especially in the short term. Climate mitigation policies could impair carbon intensive activity and industries and negative, negatively affect workers in the fossil fuel industries. And certain climate policies can also impact land and food prices, but taken all together, there are much fewer trade-offs than synergies. Now this figure is from IPCC's special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius, and it shows the interactions of SDGs with mitigation options in the 1.5 degrees Celsius pathways. And the length of the colored segments shows the strength of the synergies or trade-offs, and the shading indicates the level of confidence. Uh, you can see that there are robust synergies, particularly for the SDG 3, 7, and 12. And for SDG 1, 2, and 6, there is a risk of trade-offs or negative side effects from stringent mitigation actions compatible with 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. For example, the transformation of river ecosystems for irrigation, hydropower, and water requirements is the biggest threat to freshwater biodiversity and ecosystem services. The mitigation options consistent with 1.5 degrees Celsius pathways lead to multiple synergies across a range of sustainable development dimensions. But at the same time, the rapid pace and magnitude of change would lead to trade-offs with some sustainable development dimensions, if not carefully managed. So it's important to enhance synergies and minimize trade-offs by carefully planning for climate change adaptation and mitigation then how can national governments maximize synergies and minimize trade-offs? There are some helpful tools developed by international organizations and research institutions to examine how climate actions are expected to impact social, economic, and environmental targets contained in the SDGs. For some of the tools, the direction of analysis can be reversed to see how achieving various SDG targets can contribute to climate change mitigation and adaptation objectives. And some of the tools actually have direct focus on NDC SDG linkages. So these are more um, tools for mapping and analyzing climate actions and SDGs linkages. And we don't have enough time to go through these tools today 
but this presentation will be uploaded to UNOSD website so that you can have a look at the list later. And I can sh also share in the chat box the link to the UN report on strengthening synergies, where you can find a lot of helpful information. To sum up, uh, it is crucial to link climate action to sustainable development and vice versa. To maximize synergies and minimize trade-offs, thinking about them in a vacuum does not help. We need to think in systems, analyze synergies and trade-offs, and integrate them into plans and strategies. And in all this, a decentralized, bottom-up, an inclusive approach should be taken. Now, before I end my presentation, I would like to note that our office looks forward to exchanging more with you on climate change and the SDGs. UNOSD was established in 2011 by the United Nations and the government of Republic of Korea. The purpose of the office is to support UN member states in planning and implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including the 17 SDGs. We focus on strengthening knowledge exchange, capacity building, providing research and policy advisory services. So if you need more information, please visit our website. And we also have Facebook page, Twitter and YouTube channel where you can watch our past online events. Well, thank you very much for listening. And back to you, young -un. Thank you, Ms. Yu Zhong, for the informa informative presentation on linkage between SDGs and climate action. And please be informed that due to the time limit, we, have, uh, we will have a short Q&A after a presentation from Mr. Sergey, and another will be after all the presentation from country cases. So I would like to ask the audience to warmly welcome Mr. Sergei Kononov from UNFCCC Secretariat to present about the very recent NDC synthesis report. He is a manager in the transparency division of UNFCCC Secretariat and he is in charge of coordination coordination within the organization, the work related to NDCs under the Paris Agreement. Mr. Sergei, let me know if you're ready. Yeah, I am ready, thank you. Thank you uh, and good morning distinguished participants and colleagues. As said, I'm Sergei Kononov from the Secretariat of the uh, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And one of my functions in the Secretariat is to coordinate in this related work. And it, it is in that context that I also coordinated the preparation of the NDC synthesis report, which was just published. And uh, I will share with you today uh, the key findings from this report. Uh, let me try to share my screen. Um, so you should see it now, right? Um, okay, uh, but uh, before uh, we go to the report, uh, I would like actually to start with a quick reminder on what the indices are and uh, uh, also what the long-term strategies are in the overall architecture of the Paris Agreement. Uh, so one uh, of the most important points is that preparation and submission of nationally determined contributions is a major fundamental obligation of every country which is part of the Paris Agreement. Also important is that NDCs need to be submitted periodically every five years, and each successive NDC needs to be, needs to go beyond country's previous NDC. This creates a basis for strengthening national climate action over time, and this would also result in the corresponding strength, strengthening of global action on climate change. In parallel with the preparation of uh, the NDCs, parties also, also should strive to formulate and communicate their long-term low emission development strategies. 
such strategies, as the name implies, are to have a longer time, a time horizon than the indices, and by setting longer term objectives, they would help parties define the indices in the most ambitious manner and with a focus on achieving the long term objectives of the Paris Agreement. Both instruments, indices, and the long term strategies are important and both complement each other. Uh, and then for both of them, the year of 2020 was to be a special year because uh, back in 2015, when parties adopted the Paris Agreement, uh, parties already decided that they need to submit revised or new indices in 2020. And they were also invited to submit the long-term strategies by 2020. So the expectations for the year of 2020 were uh, quite high. Also, uh, 2020 was considered to be a start of the full NDC process, which starts with the submission of NDCs and then is followed by tracking of their implementation. The tools for tracking were established under Article 13 of the Paris Agreement through the so-called Enhanced Transparency Framework. Uh, as part of the periodic reporting, countries will be providing information to track progress in NDC implementation, and then such information will be also reviewed in accordance with provisions under Article 13. And then, as another step, collective assessment of progress would be undertaken through the uh, so-called global stock take. And this assessment will guide the preparation of the next round of NDCs. Uh, well, uh, the UNFCCC process for 2020 was planned with these expectations. We expected to receive uh, updated on UNDC from most parties in 2020, which would then feed into the consideration by parties at COP26 in late 2020, including through the NDC synthesis report. And then also in 2020, preparations for the global stock uh, should have started. But we all know now that 2020 turned out to be different. Uh, so we had an impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, there were many delays in the submissions of updated on new indices. And also we did not publish the NDC synthesis report in 2020. No formal UNFCCC conferences took place in 2020, and also COP26 uh, was postponed to late 2021. Still, uh, quite a few things did happen in 2020, despite the severe impact of the pandemic. And in terms of uh, submissions of NDCs, I would underline that countries that have Many countries have made notable and significant efforts to update their indices and to comply with the 2020 deadline. And this was a very positive sign, confirming their commitment to the implementation of the Paris Agreement. So this was more or less the background. So now uh, let me try to start coming closer to the NDC synthesis report. Because of the COVID impact uh, and uh, its implications on the submission process in the countries, but also taken into account the postponement of the Glasgow conference, we decided to issue the report in two versions. The first version was to be issued by the end of February, and this version would take on board uh, only those new or updated NDCs, which were submitted by parties by the end of last year. And then, to make sure that the conference in Glasgow has the most recent information before it, we would issue the final version sometime before uh, the beginning of the COP in Glasgow. And this final version would take on board also the submissions of NDCs in 2021. So as many of you know, we have already published the initial version of the synthesis report and this happened last Friday. 26 February. As planned, this version covers the submissions of new or revised NDCs uh, made by parties by the end of December last year. There were 75 parties which made such submissions, including the EU and its 27 members. 75 parties 
So this is about 40% of the 190 parties to the Paris Agreement. And these 75 parties account for about 30% of global GEG emissions. So obviously, uh, this is not yet a full global assessment and more information is needed. Uh, I would also mention that, uh, well, if uh, one takes uh, uh, the ceiling of 0.5% share in global greenhouse gas emissions, quite a few uh, major emitters or major economists did make their submissions in 2020, which are Argentina, Australia, Brazil, the EU, Japan, Mexico, your host, the Republic of Korea, Russia, Thailand, uh, also participating in this event, uh, and uh, the United Kingdom and Vietnam. So this was important, but I would also note that the degree of progression in mitigation varies significantly over these submissions. Quite a few countries did not submit in 2020 because of the known challenges, but most of them are expected to submit in 2021. And these are Canada, China, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Nigeria, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, South, U uh, South Africa, Ukraine, and the United States of America. So this uh, will hopefully come in 2021 and would be then included in the final version of the NDC synthesis report. And that's what the report looks like. Uh, that's the document which we published on 26 uh, February. In the box uh, at the top of the page, uh, I provided a snapshot of the mandate for this report. And it's important that uh, one of the purpose of the report is to facilitate the clarity, transparency, and understanding of the NDCs. Uh, this is important and it has implications for uh, the structure of the report, which uh, you will just see on the next slide. In addition to the report itself, we also published three technical addenda uh, on <clears throat> with information on adaptation, on mitigation, and also on uh, the contribution of NDCs towards uh, the longer term objectives of the convention and also of the Paris Agreement. Uh, the report uh, is structured as shown here. So you see that it has uh, time frames for NDC implementations and the periods of implementation, quantifiable information on the reference points, including a base year, then assumptions and methodological approaches, planning and implementation processes, mitigation co-benefits, fairness and ambition, contribution towards achieving the objective of the convention uh, and the, of the Paris Agreement. And all these, uh, as many of you may know, are components of the so-called ICTU requirements uh, outlined already in Paris in Decision 1 CP21, and then later elaborated in Decision 4 CMA1 adopted in Katowice in 2018. So uh, by structuring uh, the report in accordance with those ICTU elements, uh, we uh, try to ensure that we respond to the mandate given to us by parties in the most uh, comprehensive manner. So that's uh, the report. And that's how we synthesize the information in the report. And now what does the report tell us? Let me start with the good news. And uh, there is quite a bit of good news about this report. First of all, if we compare the information which came with these new or updated NDCs with the initial NDCs submitted mostly in 2015-2016, we see quite a few positive trends. First and uh, most important in, the term, uh, in terms of quality, the quality of the information presented in the NDCs, including the data and the pinning parties' commitments, uh, has grown significantly we can clearly see that the indices are clearer, more comprehensive and easier to understand. Secondly, equally important, we see that parties now pay much more attention to the planning and implementation process for the indices. 
And this includes not only governmental planning, but also the engagement of various social layers, including non-state actors in the NDC related discussions and processes. Then we also see, and this is also uh, very much linked to the presentation uh, uh, we saw just before mine, we see that parties started linking uh, their NDC uh, processes with the sustainable de development goals, uh, with national legislative, regulatory and planning processes, and also with the longer term aspirations for achieving climate, uh, carbon neutrality in the future. So all, well, each of these uh, bullets is quite big and it means a lot uh, in terms of the substantive con uh, content of the nationally determined contributions. I'll try to illustrate some of those bullets with, uh, with a few examples. We see that, for example, parties, when they prepare the indices, they already integrate the lessons they learned from uh, the process of uh, the preparation of their initial uh, independent nationally determined contributions which were prepared in, and submitted in 2015-2016. We also see that practically all pa parties updated the information basis for their nationally determined contributions, which is first of all the information from the greenhouse gas inventories and also projections. For this particular audience at your workshop, I'm sure that you all know how difficult and how important it is to make sure that your NDC is based on the latest available uh, data. You all contribute to this and uh, this effort to improve the quality of the underlying data is shown very clearly in the NDCs we received in 2020. I already mentioned the ICTU requirements and in fact uh, the data is part of those requirements but I, I would like to underline that quite a few parties uh, followed the guidance we have for including the ICTU elements. Although for this round of NDC updates uh, for most parties it was not mandatory to present information clearly structured in accordance with those uh, ICTU elements, but still many parties did that. And it shows again the commitment to make sure that your NDC is clear, comprehensive, and shows your commitment as, uh, as clearly as possible and uh, with the best data underlying underpinning those uh, commitments. It's quite important. Obviously, it's important that many parties strengthen their mitigation targets in the indices in both nature and degree. By nature, I mean that uh, quite a few parties moved from policy targets to quantitative targets or from sectoral targets to economy-wide uh, targets. Uh, this is uh, quite a positive development. Also, quite a few parties made their NDC commitments much uh, stringent or notably more stringent compared to what they had in the initial NDCs. Then there are lots of other things and I don't want to uh, overwhelm you with uh, lots of bullets and lots of text, but maybe uh, what I would still underline here, there is much more attention to the implementation process of NDCs in these rounds. So parties do not only provide information, so that, that's my target. Parties now pay much more attention to how the NDCs would be implemented. In terms of planning, many contain now uh, elaborated implementation plans and progress indicators for both mitigation and adaptation. But also in terms of engagement, national engagement into NDC implementation. As I already mentioned, uh, Parties do pay attention to strengthening stakeholder capacity to participate in NDC preparation and implementation. We see stakeholder consultations, we see peer reviews of draft NDCs happening in the countries. All this is important. So this was quite a bit of uh, good news, but still uh, there is some part of the news which is less good. So what I was just uh, describing in the previous two slides uh, was at the national level where we see quite a lot of improvement. This has to be noted and this is important. But if you uh, compare not only the individual uh, picture, but also the collective picture, 
if one sums up where uh, the national efforts as documented as those in disease would lead, lead us, and then you compare it with what the IPCC, the science requires us to be consistent with the global emission pathways leading us below the 1.5 goal or the two uh, degrees Celsius goal. We see that those uh, NDCs are not quite leading us there. So uh, definitely there was some progress. If you compare the current NDCs with the previous ones, for this group of 75 parties, the emissions into 2030 would be below uh, compared to what they were under the previous NDCs, but just by 3%. And then by 2030, those emissions will be just a bit less than 1% lower than in uh, 2010 and about 2% lower than in 2017. So uh, the science requires that we have sharp, significant emission reductions by either 45% or 25% by 2030 compared to 2010. And what we see now, oh, only for this subgroup of parties, of course, that the emissions uh, from now to 2030 would be more or less stable. They would decrease a bit, but not much. So uh, this is something which, of course, even if formulated for a group of uh, parties, which represents only 30% of uh, global emissions, this is still indicative and calling for action. That's what we uh, indicated in the NDC synthesis report. So the question is, so what, 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 what's now? Well, first, uh, the report warns on the urgency in to increase ambition in climate action. So we talk about urgency and about the need to increase uh, ambition and action, but we also now with the report, we have latest number confirming very strongly that need. Even if we have uh, not all parties yet in this report, it's still indicative. Well, we will issue, as I said, another full version of the NDC synthesis report before the COP. So uh, and maybe the picture will change there or maybe not, we will need to see it. But in any case, there is a need to bring climate action to the level needed. Uh, and this relates, of course, not only to mitigation action as such, but also to support because uh, the ability of many developing countries to move forward in mitigation critically depends on the level of support. So support and action should come hand in hand together, and this is important. Uh, one has to mention, given where we are, that we operate this year also in the COVID context, which is a challenge, but one should remember that this is also an opportunity. Uh, and DC planning and implementation and green recovery from the pandemic, they can be mutually reinforcing and it's quite important to rely and integrate and DC related policy and measures with those uh, uh, for the recovery from uh, the pandemic. The climate and the NDC finance should go along hand in hand with the recovery finance and that's how one can make uh, the whole process consistent and uh, efficient also in terms of climate action. So uh, 2021 is, as I hope I have shown, quite an important year. And at the end of the year at COP26 in, in Glasgow, uh, I hope parties will give a very strong signal on climate action that uh, they are committed to fulfilling uh, the objective of uh, the Paris Agreement and those objectives are achievable and they will be achieved. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sergei Kononov, for explaining about the findings from current synthesis report on indices. I truly impressed many parties that have strengthened their commitment to reducing or limiting GHG emissions. So de demonstrating increased ambition to address climate action. By the way, uh, during your well, during your presentation, there was a question from Christopher Chinapu. 
what support, invention, and improvement action is undertaken with countries failing to achieve targets and adequately report on their progress? Can you answer that question? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, I'm not sure first uh, that countries are failing to achieve targets. And uh, also I'm not sure that countries are failing to adequately report on their progress. Uh, well, uh, the targets, uh, most of the targets are formulated for 2030 or 2025. So failing, uh, to say that they are failing to achieve their targets, it, it's not quite adequate. And proper report on progress will start actually uh, in accordance with the Paris Agreement in 2024, when parties will start uh, reporting on progress in the context of the enhanced transparency framework with the BNL transparency reports. What uh, we see, uh, as I try to show, is not that countries are failing to achieve targets. We see that the targets, as uh, some parties, as I said, we deal with uh, only with 40% of the parties who submitted their updated and new indices, that those targets are not consistent yet taken collectively with achieving the reduction levels which are required by the science. And that's uh, uh, the meaning of what we show in the, the report. And uh, well, the report has come out on Friday. So I, I think it's a bit too early to see what action will be taken uh, on, well, Wednesday for the report, <laughs> which came up uh, on Friday the week before. But I'm sure that parties will be looking into uh, the findings uh, and uh, th this will be part of the overall climate change pro process this year. And I hope that in Glasgow, we will see a response to this urgent need to make uh, climate action, collective climate action stronger compared to what it is now. Thank you. Thank you for your question, answering. Nothing has been decided yet, is it right? Uh, what? Pardon? Nothing has been decided yet. Yeah, but it, it's, if you have a report on which came out on Friday, decisions in the overall intergovernmental process do not come out on the next day. It's okay. just, it, it works out a bit different. Okay, okay. We should wait for the report on Friday. Mm. Um, is there any question about the Yu Jung's or Mr. Sergey's presentation? Uh, you can raise your hand using the button I, so that I can see. I think there is nothing, but um, okay. Uh, there is another question. Um, the COVID-19 situation may have and eventually lower GHG emissions in most countries. When we are reviewing NDC achievement, do we need to sort of discount it the years to 2020 emission level or any emission reductions that may occur because of the pandemic? Well, you know, to uh, even, well, look, you are all experts, uh, so it's a good audience to talk to in that sense. But uh, just imagine what kind of methodology you would need to establish to credibly discount the impact of the pandemic. And uh, uh, this would be a huge effort. And I'm not sure if even with a huge effort, you would come up with a methodology which would be really credible. And secondly, uh, I'm not sure that this is needed. What we need is to ensure that greenhouse gas emissions get down and greenhouse gas concentrations do not grow and that get, they get stabilized and we limit uh, the anthropogenic impact on the climate. Oh, the pandemic was here for a year or two. Oh, why should we try to engage in its impact and assessing how much it helped or not? I think it's much more important uh, to look into the impact of the pandemic as an opportunity. Okay, now the emissions dropped a bit, but they will grow unless we change uh, uh, something uh, in 
the behavior in the energy production and consumption patterns uh, unless we engage on a transformation of the relevant economic and social uh, systems we live in. And I think one should focus on that transformation and uh, well, doing a calculation exercise to discount something would not necessarily help, I think. Okay. Uh, there is another yes, answer, but I think it's due to the time limit, I apologize. Only a few questions were dealing with this time. So thank you, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, but don't worry about those who have questions. A discussion is scheduled for tomorrow covering in-depth subject of a GHG for 15 minutes. So let's move to the another session sharing the experience of, uh, from the company. on the Republic of Korea's experience. Professor Yu, who has many years of experience in setting the national midterm GHG reduction goals. So Professor Yu, if you are ready, please share your screen and start the presentation. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, can you allow me to control my screen? I cannot control it right now. Okay, please wait. Okay, and now I can. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening. If there are anyone from the the country at which is currently at night, but uh, uh, it is my great great pleasure to share with my experience in setting the national greenhouse gas emission reduction target. Now, currently we are called the target as nationally determined contribution. So I will use the emission reduction target instead of NDC. And uh, my presentation will cover four topics. The first one is, is the, some very uh, brief, brief uh, comment on the Paris Agreement and NDC and Pacific, but this part, is already covered by uh, Mr. Sergey from UNFCCC Secretariat, so I will be very brief on this topic. And the second topic will be the, the Korean experience in setting the national target. And the third topic will be uh, on the implementation of the NDC in Korea so far. So I will uh, try to emphasize two aspects uh, as the follow-up of the setting the national target. And uh, so, and the last one will be the task uh, which we uh, in Korea have to achieve the 2050 net zero goals. But my uh, presentation will be mainly focused on the uh, Korean experience in setting the national target. As you mentioned that uh, the Paris Agreement was uh, it entered into force in November 1st of in 2016, and uh, almost uh, more than 190 countries ratified the, the, the Paris Agreement. So, and also according to the Paris Agreement, uh, every country or every parties need to submit their NDC every five years. So. Uh, so, so the submission of the NDC is not just one time event. You need to prepare NDC every five years and submit it. And also at the same time, we will have the task to raise your ambition uh, every five years. So that's a big task. And uh, this is some difficulty we, we will have in setting the national target or, or, submish, or determine the uh, national uh, contribution uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emission. The first, the left part of this slide show the types of the target. In, in some country, uh, no, not types of, uh, types of the mitigation contribution. In some, in some country set the emission reduction of the greenhouse gas, but the other country 
set the target of, of the policy, such as whether they will introduce a carbon tax or not, or, or, or they will introduce uh, a specific uh, energy efficiency improvement measures. And other countries set the target such that, that we, uh, in our country, we will uh, supply the electricity from the renewables by let's say 40 percent in by in the year of the 2030. So every country had different ty types of the contribution, and even if they are, are using the greenhouse gas emission reduction target, they are different in in types of those target. Uh, as in EU, uh, EU or some advanced countries, they are reduce the greenhouse gas emission in certain year compared to the emission level in 1990. That's the basic target. In other countries, some say that we will emit those amount of uh, greenhouse gas in 2030. And in uh, most developing country, they choose the emission reduction target from the base the emission uh, target, which will reduce the greenhouse gas emission from the baseline. So they will make the projection of the baseline emission by, let's say, 2030, then they will reduce by 30% from those uh, projected emission. That is the baseline scenario target. Uh, and other countries that the, that the target which will reduce the greenhouse gas emission per capita or per GDP by a certain amount, that is the intensity target. So every country has different types of the greenhouse gas, gas emission uh, reduction target depending on their uh, national circumstances and expertise. And uh, I will skip this slide because it, you already know what this means. And uh, because we, we have very different types of contribution and target, the uh, Korean government, Ministry of the Environment and our department are currently working on, on making the uh, database of, on the information of the uh, NDC, focusing on the updated information of the uh, uh, NDC or second the, uh, NDCs. So this is the example of the database we are currently working on. Uh, now I will go to the second part of my uh, presentation, which will cover the experience of the uh, Korean NDC uh, preparations. And it did, did that uh, setting or uh, preparing the NDC is very intense, uh, are very intensive works. We need the systematic approach. We are organizing research teams and we are organizing review committees and we are, pre we are uh, uh, hosting the public hearing several times. So we first, when you set the national target, uh, which is the area of, of the expert, uh, experts. So, so I will explain how we, it, derive the emission reduction on uh, target in Korea. Uh, and the second, we will have the review team. The review team is uh, co uh, composed of the expert in economics and energy and environment. And I will uh, show how in, uh, we in Korea have had the in very intensive, the public hearing process. So the first, uh, I will explain how we uh, calculate the mitigation of potential in Korea. First, you, when you uh, uh, derive the emission reduction uh, potential, you first you need to the projection in in the main driver of of the emission, the greenhouse gas emission, which is the principally in principle the economic variables. So you need the long-term projection of the population, also you need to long-term projections of the GDP, also you need to have the uh, projections of the industrial structure in your country. Then uh, from those the projections, you will 
uh, have the projection on greenhouse gas emission emissions. Then you are applying some engineering um, based uh, uh, model to derive the costs uh, of the of implementing new technology or equipment and the amount of the emission reduction which we will have by the, the introduction of the, those new technology or the equipment. Then you will have the you will have the assessment of the economic impacts when you adopt that kind of the emission reduction target. Then by considering those uh, cost and the degree of the emission reduction, then you will uh, determine the emission reduction target. That's what we uh, had. First, uh, this uh, in Korea, uh, we are making the, the emission reduction uh, projections, uh, but which, which you may call it is the baseline. But uh, in Korea, we are uh, taking the approach of the projection on the business as usual, which means that in our uh, estimation or in our projections of the greenhouse gas emissions, we include the impact of the policy or efficiency improvement already uh, imposed in, in by the policies or some measures. So in other words, even in, in, in the projection on the business uh, as usual, we are, we are uh, still have the continued uh, improvement of the efficiency. In, but in the other uh, cases or in other countries, they will fix the the, the efficiency level in, in, in certain levels. So there will be no uh, additional policies or there, there, there could be no uh, efficiency improvement in, in other cases. But in Korean cases, we reflect, we, we include the impact of the continued efficiency improvement. And so the, the bottom line shows the, how we, uh, uh, the, the information about the, the projection of, of the oil prices, the population and economic growth rate by 2030. And once you have the, the projection of the populations and number of households and the, the GDP or oil or fuel prices and industri industrial structure, uh, structure, then you will have the, have you will need to make projection on the, some activity data, such as the demand for the electricity. Also, you also need to have the, the production of the major product industry by industry, such as the, the steel or the, the petrochemical products. Or in the transport sector, you may need to the, the projection of the number of the vehicles or the, uh, the kilometers traveled by each vehicle per year, or you need to have the, the size of the floor in your country. So in order to uh, have the projection of those variables, you also need the long, the, the long you need to also have the data from the, the the past several years. Then you need to decide how much you will reflect the impact of the policy and measures in, in those activity data data. Then you from those the activity data data, you will have the the, the impact of the uh, efficiency improvement. Then once you deter, determine the level of the efficiency improvement, then you will have the, the, the uh, data or the projection of the energy use. But when you when I talking about the energy use, it is the energy use by each type of the energy. Then you will, uh, after you have the type of the energy, then you will uh, have, have the, you, you can calculate the, projection of the emissions. But in certain cases, such as the industrial process, you will not make a projection on the energy use. You will directly uh, make a projection on, on the emission itself. 
And these are the example of the, the projection of the baseline uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So from, for example, we, when we make the first projection in 2008, we have the, uh, the actual emission data by 2005. From uh, 1990 to 25, the amount of the greenhouse gas emission have been doubled from 281 million ton to 594 million ton of the CO2 equivalent. But in, when we're making the projections, the amount of the increase is only 37% from 25 to 2020. And when we make the another projection in 2015, uh, the projection, the amount of the greenhouse gas increase from 2020 through to 2030 is by 10%. So we are decreasing the rate of the growth the year by year. Why? I'm sorry. Okay. But uh, when before I go through the, how we make the projections, I will give some example of the current situation of the greenhouse gas inventory in Korea. In Korea, we uh, we covering all very details, the sectors by sectors. So we are covering all the five sectors such as energy, industrial process, agriculture, and non CFO and waste. And also we are currently we are covering six the, the uh, greenhouse gas gases uh, controlled by the Kyoto protocols. But we currently we do not include the NF3, which was controlled by by the amendment of dual amendment of the Kyoto protocols. But currently we are covering six. Uh, the uh, greenhouse gases is. But you know, to assure the quality of the greenhouse gas emissions, we have the, we have the very specific, we arrange the, the institution to ensure the quality of the greenhouse gas emission nationwide. So, so for example, each uh, ministry are responsible for, to uh, have the, the, the first round of the greenhouse gas emissions. Then they will submit, submit those information to the uh, greenhouse gas inventory uh, research center of Korea. Then and GIR, GIR will review, but, but, but will have very intensive review of those, of those submit, submitted uh, greenhouse gas statistics. Then once they approve the the quality of the, the greenhouse gas emissions, they, then the, the committee will approve then approve those uh, static, the, the inventories and they will announce year by year. So we have a very intensive review process to assure the quality of the, the national inventories. But, and also we have the information from uh, 1990. So in order to have long-term projections, you will, will need no long, long, uh, term past history of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And if you also you have the greenhouse emission inventory and you make the projections, then you will have the emission reduction potential. In, in 2008. When we first uh, announced the, the national greenhouse gas emission reduction target, we uh, provide three alternatives. Alternatives. For, for, for the reason why we have the three alternatives uh, target is, is that uh, it depends. We uh, decide to have the uh, to have the three alternatives based on the the emission reduction cost. When we first uh, derived the emission reduction potentials, we apply, we used hundreds of the emission reduction technology or equipment. So 
So for each technology had different emission potentials, and also it had, it had different emission reduction costs. And when, when I men, uh, mentioned the cost, is the cost of, of installing new equipment and also operation of the equipment or, and also the fuel costs. In, in the left side, from the left side, we have the, the cost of the reduction increase. For, for example, when in the red line, they say if you, if the government decide to set the national target with the highest cost of let's say 70, 70 US dollar, then you will you, you could reduce this amount of uh, emission. If, but if you lower the 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 cost the country willing to uh, accept, then you will have lower level of the emission reduction. That's why we have the three alternatives. And uh, this slide shows the details of the, of the cost and the major uh, emission reduction uh, technology or method or equipment they will uh, apply when setting the, this kind of the uh, targets. And the bottom part of this slide show the economic impact of uh, emission reduction compared to the no emission reductions. So when you take the scenario one, the, the, GDP, the GDP will could lower by 0.29% compared to uh, no the GDP level with low emission reductions. And once you have the alternatives, alternatives, you we had very intensive public hearing process. But uh, but there are two major uh, interest groups in setting the national greenhouse gas emission reduction. It is the each the ministry, and it is the industrial sectors. So. Uh, Within the government, we had very intensive interministerial meetings to uh, harmonize the difference in the in the level of the uh, greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction target. Also, we had uh, several. Let's uh, say, for we have more than thirty times of the meetings with the, the industrial sector uh, sectors. At the, at the, in most cases, we have a very strong uh, opposition uh, from the industrial sectors. And once you have some, uh, some agreement in the, in the uh, alternatives of the uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction target, and also you have some uh, adjustment made, then we, we brought those uh, divide the one to the uh, for the uh, public hearing, and we in Korea we had more than fifty uh, case uh, cases of public hearings in Korea, and also we have have uh, ha also had the survey from the public on, on on their opinion on the three alternatives. Then you, uh, the Korean government decided the national target. So that is a very intensive uh, process. Uh, but when you set in the, uh, was, or when you derive, or, or when you calculate the emission reduction potentials, the main, one of the key uh, determinant of the emission reduction uh, potential is the cost of new equipment, especially new technology. But this is one example of how difficult there will be the, the estimate of the cost which you, you will have in, in the assessment of the emission reduction potentials. For example, this slide show how the cost of the new technology could decrease over the, over the let's say, eight years. So, for example, the, this is the installation cost of the renewables from 2010, from 2018. It is, it is just eight years, but the cost lowered from, uh, let's say, for solar photovoltaic per, per kilometer, 
uh, in 2010, it is about uh, four, uh, four, four thousand, about 46 uh, hundred, uh, hundred uh, US dollar, but it lowered in 2018 to 1200. So it, it, in terms of the power generation, also we, the cost lowered by 60% just over the eight years. So when you make the, the projection of the cost reduction of the new technology over the let's say 20 years or 30 years, it is very difficult to have. So in, in, so, so in those the cases, with low, uh, with low uh, anticipation or lower, low expectation of the of the the cost, then you will have a low level of the emission reduction po uh, potentials. So the unit, the cost of the new uh, technology or equipment are, are very uh, critical in your calculations. And once you have the uh, uh, emission reduction target, you need to also develop the pathway through to, through to the target years. So in Korea, currently in Korea, we have the, the, the pathway to, to meet the national target by 2030 from, 20, from, the, from 2018. This is, is the example of the Korean case. And the third part of my presentation is, is implementation of the NDC. Uh, in order to have a, a successful implementation of the national emission reduction target, the Korean government uh, take, took two uh, approach. One is the institu institutionalized the greenhouse gas emission management. So they, uh, uh, introduced the Greenhouse Inventory and Research Center as, as the independent and permanent the control or, or management set, uh, institution to have the, to continue to uh, have uh, the very consistent, the assessment of the process of the, of the, the uh, meeting the target and also they uh, are in, in responsible of setting the national target. So they uh, brought uh, the GIR for the, the independent and permanent uh, management of greenhouse gas in Korea. And so this is the organization of the GIR in Korea. They have the uh, the I'm sorry, this is the, the uh, view, vision of the, the GIR and they, in, in the GIR, IR, they have the three different uh, teams. Uh, one team is responsible for the setting the national target and the other team is responsible for the inventory. And the, the second um, follow-up of the setting, after the setting the national target is the implementation of some policies. Uh, they introduced the emission uh, trading uh, uh, scheme in, in 2012, and the emission trading scheme is implemented implemented starting in 2050. And you know, but the the task uh, of of uh, implementing the ETS is that the ETS will not cover the whole. Uh, greenhouse emission in, in Korea. Currently about 60% emission are covered by uh, greenhouse, uh, by emission trading scheme. But in order to introduce emission trading scheme, you also need to have the emission, emission of, of, uh, at the entity or form level. So you need a different system to uh, gathering, to get, gather the details the information of the greenhouse gas emissions installation by installations, and this is the so currently we have the 
But we country, the Korean government have a very detailed information of the greenhouse gas emission of, at the of, of installation level uh, starting from 2007. Uh, so because we have those kind of information, we, the Korean ETS cover all sectors and all six greenhouse gases. And uh, uh, at the end of the last year, the Korean president announced uh, each uh, ambition to have uh, the carbon neutral neutrality by 2050. But it is very different, difficult task. For example, uh, even currently we have the emission reduction target such as 24 24.4% 24 uh, reduction of the emission compared to the emission level in uh, 2017. So then which means that we need to reduce greenhouse gas emission uh, by 2% for each year. But from 2030, in order to have carbon neutrality, we have to reduce greenhouse gas emission by more than 10% year by year, which is very, very difficult. But, but the Korean government announced that it will have the detailed uh, plan to have the carbon neutrality by 2050 by the end of the, this year. So it is very hard, it will be very difficult tasks. But, but, because, but uh, at the same time, we had very uh, affluent in, uh, experience to developing the, the, the nation nationwide the emission reduction target, they will be successfully develop some uh, detailed plan to have the carbon neutral, neutrality by the end of uh, 2050. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yu, with the powerful information of Korea's. Uh, during your presentation, there were two questions, but we don't have the time much. So let's have uh, let's have Q&A session after all the presentation from the countries. And by the way, I was informed that the re representative from the Cambodia cannot attend due to the urgent schedule. So I'd like to move to another case of Bangladesh's case. So Bangladesh experience will be led by the speakers from Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, then Department of Environment. So Mr. Sanjay, Mr. Loko Nusuman, and Mr. Murja, if you're ready, Mike is yours. Please share your screen when you're ready. Thank you. All. Moment. I, I, I'm sharing. Wait a moment, please. Okay. Okay, this is quite okay. Very good afternoon and evening. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. At the outset, before my presentation, let me convey my sincere appreciation and gratitude to the organizer of, on behalf of Bangladesh for organizing third Guinness Gas Inventory System Training Workshop today. I am Sanjay Kumar Bhumi, Joint Secretary. Um, I will present first part. My second part will present by Rukunu Javan, Deputy Secretary, Minister of Environment Forest, and finally, Mirza Shokudali, Director. And today, so next slide. Next slide, yes. As you know, Bangladesh global contribution to the climate greenhouse gas emission is only 0.35% of total global emissions. And, but Bangladesh always participating active, actively in the global 
agenda. As you know, there's Bangladesh, one of the climate vulnerable country in the world. And the latest 2021 report said, German was that Bangladesh seventh position in the worst affected country in the world. But Bangladesh wants to actively play its part in the global collective action with GHG missions. We have submitted our interim report within the 2020-31 December, and we are committed with global community that, according to the Paris Agreement, and in our in our interim report, we give priority on the mitigation actions that will play a move to a low carbon climate resilient economy and becoming a middle income country also give priority in our interim brief. Next slide, please. This is the scenario there. In 2015, Bangladesh submitted INDC before Paris Agreement and in our NDC, Bangladesh, three sectors only coverage. One is power sector, another industry, and another one is transport sector. And it will say that in our NDC, we will give target of 5% unconditional commitment reduction. And this is amounting to 12 million ton carbon dioxide equivalent and conditionally 10%, 24 million metric ton, this is 10%. In total, this is the scenario is that we will reduce 15% if get sufficient technical support from developed countries. And from business as usual, we will reduce 15% greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Next slide, please. This is the scenario that we are now in the process of preparing our full NDC update report. We already submitted interim report, but we are now in the process of quantifying and actually assessment process with stakeholders in our different sectors. And we mainly give priority from primary and secondary sources of data and Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics information. And we are now conducting stakeholder analysis, also stakeholder consultation meeting, pre-informant interview, and we develop a sector-wise questionnaire template for collecting data. And also we are now reviewing our existing policies and different sectors undertaken and what actually our present position, we are under five years position and can we include more sectors? This is now one of the major concern for us. As you know, in our NDC only include three sectors. Now we are now um, thinking that another more sectors like agriculture, waste management, forestry and other relevant stakeholders. And collectively, we are now analyzing and uh, uh, is it possible we are considering thinking for additional more sectors. Next slide. This is the scenario of our interim report. In our interim report, what actually included there? In our interim report, we included there our action plans like Muzi Climate Prosperity Plan up to 2030. National Solar Energy Roadmap 2021 to 2041, what actually our mission, mission and what we want to go. And National Excellent Action Plan for Clean Cooking up to 2020 to 2030. And forest and carbon in, in, uh, inventories also, we are uh, included in our interim NDC. Bangladesh National Action Plan for reducing short-lived climate pollutants. We are now formulating also national adaptation plan. Energy efficiency and conservation master plan up to 2030. Clean development mechanism and carbon trading also included in our interim 
NDC. Monitoring and reducing air pollution also included there and renewable energy initiatives, policies, and promoting green technology, these all included in our interim campus. And in our enhanced submitted NDC, we, we are now the scenario of our Bangladesh present position in sector the 48 percent now contributing energy sector greenhouse gas emissions and if we see that in our industry sector this is just only find 70 percent and in agriculture another major sector we are now identifying that contributing 30 percent and worst sector another 15 percent though we are not included in our first 2015 NDC. And also we are thinking with our land use and forestry sector. It is also contributing 5.3%. So this is the scenario that we find out in our present third national communication. And now we give priority how we cover is in increase because in our NDC when it's submitted, this three sector only covers 48% of our GHG mission. Now we are ta targeting to include agriculture sector, wash sector, and forestry sector. Then it will cover is more than 93% of the greenhouse gas emission of total of our country. Next slide, please. And this is the, our potential sectors, what I explained earlier that why we try to include more sectors. You see, we try to now include our households that energy efficiency appliances can ensure 10% improvement from our present situation. And if we include, uh, we already starting that Bangladesh already distributed four lakhs improved coke stocks. And in our policy, we also include more, how to increase more improved coke uh, stocks to our marginal level and it will safeguard 11.5 percent of our greenhouse gas emissions and we are now improved biomass coke stops can contribute 16 percent of our improvement moreover in the overall commercial building sector we are now trying that energy efficiency appliances and it will improve our 25 percent achievement care and in our mitigation sectors, especially in case of agriculture sector, as you know, that is a big sector, though we have a concern about our 160 million people and their food security, but mechanization we are now starting in our uh, agriculture field. And we are now introducing new production technology that's alternate wetting and drying in irrigation system. And if we apply it in our system, then it will achieve 15% of greenhouse gas emissions, especially methane emission during irrigation system, we can minimize. And we can increase mechanization and drop cattle improved use of organic manures can achieve 45% improvement from our present standard to greenhouse gas emission. And organic com uh, composting also energy recovery, as earlier mentioned that in worst sector, we are now trying to our waste management waste to convert into energy and it will lead to 30 to 50 percent improvement in waste sector all those greenhouse gas emission from land use land management is very insignificant but but we give top, top priority our forestry sector and also land use management because it's another potential sector for bangladesh Forestry sector, not only mitigation related, but also related to our adaptation also. As you know that in our southern parts, specifically due from cyclone, our Sundarbon, we are now trying to afforestation and reforestation for giving protection from our cyclones adaptation at the same time, also improve our mitigation system. Now, next slide. Issues of what actually we now considering I mentioned that this, our existing three sectors, power, industry, and transport. And we are also thinking to improve our ambition from this sector, 5%, 10%. And now also we are thinking inclusion of agriculture and waste as addition to sectors in the updated NDC as to be contribute 30% and 50% of total national emission respectively. 
we believe measurable time bound target gsg emissions reduction from sectors is that in our updated ndc and again i want to say that due to covid 19 situation our stakeholder analysis consultation delayed of course it's a global problem and that's why we just submitted our interim report only included our policies but now we are in the process of assessment we are now quantifying what actually what our present position and after taking these policies in three sectors and also including our agriculture sector and waste management sector and our forestry sector what will be our position and we believe that in our updated ndc and we will ready it within mid 2021 and we believe before cop 26 we will come with the updated second ndc new ndc with new ambitious target not only three sectors also include our more additional sectors next slides so again from our part we believe that we though in case of mitigation our our contribution is very in 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 global context but we grip top priority mitigation because our honorable prime minister is now as you know that our honorable prime minister is now president of climate vulnerable forum 48 countries and she asked all nations to submit their ambitious ndc in due time and also we bangladesh submitted our interim ndc in due time and we are hopeful that we will prepare our ndc new ndc quantified and details ndc will submit within mid of 2021 and in our ndc we will be ambitious target we believe it and we are now as you know that we are now processing in we give priority on solar energy we are now our target was 2020 10 percent and within 2030 we have a master plan taking to 30 percent and within 2050 we are targeting to minimum 50 percent solar energy and we in our power sector the, uh, we have targeted that any uh, we avoid coal power plant and if there is any coal plant that we are super crit critical system we now to adapt and in other system other system that as a though it is not mentioned is not because we already submitted there's a ldc country in parish agreement it is not mandatory for like country sids and ldc but we believe that bangladesh is a progressive country and we we are at the same time mitigation and at the same time in adaptation field we have enough activities and we believe again to go my presentation part at, at the end that we believe we will submit our updated ndc within mid of 2021 this is on behalf of my part and my second part will present by uh, my uh, colleague deputy secretary rukunuj jaman and thank you again for patience here in my part and last if there is any question that we will uh, come again for answering so now i request mr rukunuj jaman for his part thank you <coughs> thank you sir uh, good afternoon and good evening to all uh, for giving me a flow to uh, participate today's uh, greenhouse gas inventory trading session. Uh, I'll present actually greenhouse inventory system and in Bangladesh that's closely related to NDC update and review. Present status of national GH inventories. Bangladesh com uh, community communicated first GH inventory based on inventory year 2007 to 2012 on UNFCCC in 2018. IPCC 2006 inventory guidelines are used to estimate GHG emission extensively from energy, IPPU, AFLU, and waste sector. Bangladesh is planning to conduct first biannual update report considering inventory year 
starting from 2013. <coughs> Bangladesh prepared its initial national communication in 2002. It's the history we first developed our initial national communication in 2002. Second national communication was prepared in 2005 and third national communication was prepared in 2018. We hope to collect the required data inventory year 2018 and beyond under implementation of biannual update report one project. Uh, national GH inventory activities, we covered uh, different sectors, uh, mainly from energy sectors. Uh, our, our previous speaker, uh, our Honorable Sec General Joint Secretary, Shajit Kumar already mentioned that energy sector is the biggest GHG emission contributor to Bangladesh, almost uh, few, more than 40%. So uh, electricity generation, manufacturing industries, construction, transport, commercial, institutional, and re residential area, energy sector covered and industrial process and other product uses, IPPU, uh, we, we consider cement manufacturing and urea fertilizer. Mm. Uh, in agriculture sector, we consider methane emission from rice fields, direct nitrous oxide from fertilizer application, indirect nitrous oxide emission from nitrogen-based fertilizer, enteric methane emission, methane emission uh, from manure, direct nitrous oxide emission from manure system, indirect nitrous oxide emission from volatilization, indirect nitrous oxide emission from leaching on runoff. And another sector of waste, we consider waste sector, uh, methane emission from domestic wastewater, methane emission from industrial wastewater, uh, GHG emission from municipal solid waste. Uh, another sector, land use, land use change and forestry, Carbon dioxide from soil carbon, loss of carbon due to fuel wood removal, loss of carbon due to natural disturbances, uh, estimation uh, on the above and below ground biomass strokes, estimation on soil carbon stocks. Uh, we also not yet consider international bunker, that is aviation and marine in our GHG. Uh, inventory activities. Now, what the challenges we face, our uh, updating indices and GHG inventory and MRD system implementation. My, my main problem comes from COVID-19, all of the world suffering this uh, pandemic. And uh, due to COVID, we couldn't submit our NDC last year, 2020, but we already submit interim report. That actually interim report, our joint secretary sir already mentioned that this report only a description, not quantify. But we are now quantifying uh, the appropriate NDC upgrade. It's process already going on, and my previous speaker already mentioned that. So I do not speak about more about this uh, issue. Uh, another challenge: data gaps. Identify how to resolve as per IPCC 2009 guideline, orientation on different data providing agencies with national GAG inventory development process, setting up necessary quality assurance and quality control procedure to collect the credible data from the agencies. Data credibility is one of the biggest challenges for Bangladesh. And setting up actual data collection arrangement with relevant to government, non-government, private agencies, Data and availability is another problem. Oh, we have very limited uh, secondary data. So data and availability, we always face this challenge like other uh, third world countries or developing countries. Lack of awareness about the national GAG inventory among the stakeholders, lack of institutional arrangement in the data providing agency or department, inadequate, inadequate coordination with different, different agencies, ministries. Uh, it is the, uh, one, of, one of the biggest problem and consulted based GH inventory preparation. We only actually depends on consultant, but a good thing is our consultant all comes from Bangladesh and they're all of them are scholar. Uh, lack of capacity of re, uh, respective official from relevant data providing organization. When you collect data to the our, our stakeholders, we face a lot of problems because they have uh, they have uh, lack of capacity or uh, 
So that's why we face a lot of problem, uh, lack of um, uh, comprehensive training and other support in absence of uh, central data hub. We have no central data hub, inadequate institutional and technical capacity, uh, inadequate uh, institutional structure and data sharing, data archiving, updating, um, inadequate coordination among the collecting data. Uh, that's, that's all. And lesson learned. What lesson learned from the NDC updating? Importance of importance of self-sustaining institutional framework. We need a self-sustaining institutional framework. Our uh, we need a capacity building among our government officials, our or our all stakeholders to uh, implement NDC update. Uh, dedicated human resources. Uh, we need an, uh, for the national inventory development mm. and. Um, Data sharing arrangement with the relevant agencies, uh, development of ge generic data collection template applicable for relevant sectors, subsectors, implementation of quality assurance and quality control plan, comprehensive source on uh, and data info verification, systematic archiving of data, documents, inventory reports for reference, importance of central data hub for national GAG inventory. Uh, SDG NDC linkage. Sustainable development will refer to changes in the environment, social, economic, and uh, as a result of a mitigation action, that is uh, changes in household income resulting from sales of non timber forest products, that is uh, mushroom and other honey, etc. Uh, capacity enhancement, strong coordination among the ministries, agencies, financial mechanism. Implementation coordination for improving quality of NDC. International cooperation. We need because uh, we, we have a shortage of fund where we require financial support from NDC implementation. Uh, matter of, it is good news for us because uh, in, the, for, in our NDC update, UNDP uh, funded by JEF uh, support our NDC implementation, financially support our NDC implementation. Technical cooperation for strengthening institutional arrangement for um, MRB system. Uh, sharing experience from developed countries, nation. Share experience, lesson learned from the best practices. Today's seminar, I hope, uh, from the different uh, countries' uh, experience, uh, we can take some knowledge that will help us to uh, our implementation of our NDC update. Uh, DOE under MFC is the process implementation two projects already they are implementing. These projects also they are depend on donor agencies, technical knowledge, capacity building, and evaluating results, impact on support, uh, promote cooperation between parties, identify area, improvement of capacity building and needs, and many many things. Again, I do not want to mention due to time time consumer. And uh, recommendation, many recommendation, but I will uh, not uh, give all the information to all, you all. You will get, get the slides in uh, even USD websites. Uh, just I uh, mentioned that strengthening national institutional arrangement and capacity to enhance MRB transparency in line with NDC activities because uh, uh, that MRB system when you develop that our data reliability and authenticity and credibility will. Develop and we also get the accuracy of data. Develop GH inventory tracking MRV system for Bangladesh. We have to develop this. Uh, strengthening capacity of development of an integrated knowledge management from platform for sharing transparency activities. Appropriate methodology should be used in accordance with the relevant MRV system guidance, promote accuracy, implementing planning communication, institutional arrangement, data collection for all sectors. And uh, institutional legislative policy framework that support implementation and ma maintenance of sustainable national GAG inventory management system, capacity of facilitated data collection and archiving. Uh, uh, this is uh, my last part. Uh, thank you for your patience hearing. Uh, 
Thank you all. Gamsa Hamida. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation from the from the Bangladesh team. So uh, um, today's last presentation remains from Philippines, Mr. Richard Palmer to work as a development management officer under the implementation oversight, oversight division of the Climate Change Commission. Under the division, he is part of NDC Secretariat tasked to work on target setting and emissions calculation, calculation. He is also part of the mitigation team of the division working on the interagency coordination and implementation of um, Philippine greenhouse gas inventory management and reporting system. But before moving to the next presentation, I I kind of ask Mr. Richard to understand about the, the delay for the presentation, and I kind of ask to help us to make presentation short due to the time limit. Thank you. Uh, okay, I understand. So. I just turned off my my videos. Uh, my internet is quite unstable. So let us begin. So good, af good afternoon. Thanks for that introduction. I'm Richard Victor Palma. So I will not uh, repeat your introduction to from uh, your introduction. So the Climate Change Commission is the sole and lead policy making body of the government mandated to coordinate, monitor, and evaluate programs and action plans of the Philippines related to the climate change. Uh, question, is my audio clear or not? Yes, we can hear you precisely. Okay, thank you, thank you. So on behalf of the Philippine government, I would like to thank you all for the invitation to attend and speak on this GHGI system training workshop. And without further ado, I'll be presenting the experiences and lessons learned from the Philippine and DC development. So the objective and the outline of the presentation is shown in this slide. So first, I will present about the Philippine National GHG Inventory. Second is the Philippine NDC development. And third is the activities on the post-NDC submission, so action. So in this third slide, I will focus on the Philippine GHG Inventory. So this is the overview of the Philippine GHG in the Inventory process. We have the Executive Order 174 series of 2014 which institutionalized the Philippine JHG inventory, and we put premium on organizing our institutional arrangement for coordinative reporting and accounting of our inventory to ensure the quality of the inventory process such as to avoid double counting or emission. We must take note also that the Philippines use the 20, uh, 2006, 2006 IPCC guidelines in the conduct of the JHG inventory. So per EO 174, the CCC is the overall lead in the national JHG inventory. And these are the functions. First is to provide, provide direction and guidance. Second is to develop archiving, reporting, and monitoring, evaluating of JHGI. Provide continuous uh, capacity building. Fourth is to conduct the national JHGI quality assurance quality control. So on the upper left, this is the institutional arrangement. So Department of Environment and Natural Resources, uh, this is responsible for the waste, industrial processes and product use, IPPU, and forestry and other land use, pollute sectors. While the Department of Agriculture and the Philippine Statistics Authority is for the agricultural sector, Department of Transportation for the transportation sector, DOE for the energy sector. So their, their task is to conduct and monitor specific GHG inventory, report the GHGI to the CCC based on a grids reporting scheme. So please take note that the department level in the Philippines is equivalent to the ministries of other countries. The CCC ensured the technical and scientific soundness to have the national panel of technical experts uh, that is in the right of the orange box. So in this National Panel Technical Experts, one of our experts is Prof. Leandro Vendia, who is part of an IPCC working group. And on our National Inventory Report, we have already communicated the 1994 and 2000 GHG inventory. And we are 
on our way to finalize the 2010 JSG inventory. And once we have finalized this, we will communicate this to the UNFCCC. And please take note that the 2010 P uh, Philippine JSG inventory, national inventory report is developed alone by the government experts. The Philippine JSG inventory is a whole of society uh, approach. So we have here the other uh, government agencies. So this have provided us data analysis as needed, such as climate protection, RCP representative, concentration pathways, and climate types. For the private sectors, this is our partners in providing GHG emissions data, especially inputs of private sectors on IBPU, which have been provided to DNR. For energy sectors, such as power plant, power plant data are provided by the private sectors to DO. And lastly, the academe is to the NPTE, since most of our experts are also members of the academe. So this is the P, uh, Philippine milestones in GH3 inventory. In 2014, this is the establishment of EO174. In 2014 to 2018, these have been the activities that have been made. Delivery of capacity building, technical backstops on GHGI, creation of sectoral GHG teams. Development of the 2010 GHG inventory and setting up of an online domestic measurement, reporting, and verification systems in the form of NICDIS. NICDIS means National Integrated Climate Change Database and Information Exchange System. In 2019, uh, conducted a GHG inventory QAQC, Quality Assurance Quality Control Workshop of sectoral inventory support with assistance from the UNFCCC and FAO. And in 2020, uh, this is the time for the processing of finalization of the 2010 National uh, National JCA Inventory Report. So these are the gaps that were observed in the conduct of the GHG inventories. On the left side is the institutional aspects, such as the issues in cost-cutting emissions between the energy and IPPU and their linkages. Uh, there is the need to map all data needs to, for a complete energy sector JHG inventory to identify possible data provider. The identification of external actors, data providers, academic experts, etc., that can help in the GHG inventory, especially in energy and IBPU. Fourth is the retain, retaining of institutional memories, such as GHGI staff, data collectors, and experts. On the right side is in the technical aspects. Uh, there has been limited quality assurance, quality control plans for the next GHG inventory cycle. Uh, capacity needs in terms of GH, training JHG compilers, understanding time consistency, and uncertainties. Third is the application of TACCC, uh, transparency, accuracy, completeness, comparability, consistency, like discussions of data source and its compilation is adjust and adjustments for inventory needs. And uh, energy and IPPU teams to review reporting on non energy use of fuels and not burnt fossil fuels. Uh, for the support needed from the international, international community, uh, uh, the support needed to enhance this uh, JHGI, to, to address the JHGI gaps is incorporated in our Global Environment Facility, GEF, preparatory support for the third national communication or the first biennial update report. So this is the action plan. The plan was to detail a procedural manual or guidance document on the conduct of JHG inventory quality assurance quality control at a frequency that is responsive to national objectives and international reporting obligations. So these are the four phases. Phase one is the development of templates based on international guidelines. Phase two, stakeholder and experts communication on templates. Phase three, adoption of the guidance documents into policy to CCC resolution. Phase four, capacity building and learning session on the use of guidance documents. So, so far, the Philippines is only on phase one. So this is the summary. This is where we are now. Uh, we have three NIR, NIRs. Uh, the 1994 and 2000 has been already communicated and the 2010 is uh, ongoing finalization. Uh, we have conducted capacity building and technical backstops, national policy institutional arrangement. Uh, this is the EO 174, a national MRV system platform. And where we do want to go? So we need to continuously improve on the NRIs. 
Further strengthening of institutional arrangement, uh, the development of QAQC guidance documents, which is uh, discussed a while ago, monitoring of results and improvements over time in line with the climate climate objectives and agenda and based on the commitment to Paris Agreement, but this will be done through collaboration among agencies and with private sector, engagement of sectoral experts in academic research institution and IPCC. And this is in order to, the, to improve quality data and sustained system for the NRs uh, in data and information for improved mitigation analysis for national and sectoral mitigation roadmaps. And three, further elaborate and implement MRB system for mitigation roadmaps and plans to enhance transparency and reportability over time. So that is for the first part of my presentation. Uh, the next part is focus on the NDC development. So in this slide is the pa Philippine Paris Agreement ratification timeline. From 2015, the year the Philippines submitted is INDC to 2017, which the PH become a party to the Paris Agreement. So showing these slides are the non-negotiable considerations of the Philippines. NDC implementation is for the purpose of supporting sustainable industrial development, poverty eradication and provisions of basic needs, securing social and climate justice and energy security. There are multiple sustainable development goals under the 2030 agenda that is tackled by these four non-negotiable considerations for the Philippines. Therefore, these considerations are the key focus areas for strengthening the synergy in this joint implementation of the 2030 agenda in the Paris Agreement for the case of the Philippines. So we must take note that the Philippines, our country, intends that in the mitigation will be pursued as a function of adaptation, meaning adaptation with mitigation co-benefits. So these are the four R's of the Philippine NDC process. So revisit, reconstruct, report, and redefine. So first is revisit. We have revisited, wait, uh, revisit the parameters of the INDC submitted to the UNFCCC and assess the applicability to the NDC. So for the INDC, uh, it has submitted target of 70% emissions reductions by 2030 relative to the BAU scenario of 2000 to 2030, which are all fully conditional. So this target was a strategic investment decision in, er in, in order to encourage foreign investments and leave prop to greener and more sustainable future. So next is to reconstruct. So recalculate based on the updated methodologies, data sets, parameters, assumptions, and adaptation and mitigation measures. So these are the analytical tools that were used in the NDC development. Moreover, the 2010 GHG inventory that was discussed a while ago was, the, was used as the basis for the formulation of the NDC policies and measures. So the key categories identified by the agencies uh, agencies under the EO-174 were the ones that were proposed the PAMs. So key category meaning that these are the uh, areas that have high emission source or potential high efficient source in the future, thus creating reduction on existing emissions and avoidance on potential emissions. Slide 15. The CCC has been spearheading the development and finalization of our NDC to a whole of nation approach. And this can be observed on the numerous consultations and meetings with the different sectors of the nation from 2016 to 2020. So just feel free to go over the slide to, uh, to minimize the time in this slide. So the focus here is we have three public consultations and the other is more. So since 2016, a progression of activities were conducted to develop our first NDC and to assure its technical and scientific soundness. Also shown in this uh, slide. It is also a long-term planning of our aspiration for sustainable industrial development and achieving national development objectives of the country. 
So in the process of the NDC, the following government agencies lead the NDC sectoral developments. So we can see here the four lead agencies that were discussed a while ago in the EO-174, where, which, <clears throat> so these agencies are responsible in the GHGI inventory, and they are the ones that have provided inputs for our country's national determined contribution by identifying their sectoral policies and measures. While the two agencies here at the top most, namely the NEDA, National Economic and Development Authority, and DOF, Department of Finance, have provided inputs for cost-cutting concerns, long-term socioeconomic development planning, and fiscal policy preparation of the NDC. So our NDC reflects the highest possible climate ambition given our national circumstances. Our level of ambition is based on our aspirations to meet the National Industrialization and Paris Agreement goals. So these are the only few of the many lessons that learned in the NDC development. So first is the importance of engaging the agencies in the development of the NDC as they will play a crucial role in the, the NDC implementation. Second is the importance of enhancing capacities of the agencies on different mitigation analytical tools. For this will be, this will enable agencies to do calculations and quantify mitigation potentials of policies and measures. And third is the conduct of multi-sectoral consultations at earlier date. This would give the agencies ample amount to process inputs and comments from stakeholders, ensuring the whole of society approach of the Philippine NDC. So the last hours, last two of the four hours. So report is a regular reporting of the NDC every five years and the development of the MRV system to track, monitor, and evaluate progress. For the case of the MRV system, we have already the leaked this that uh, was discussed a while ago. And redefine is redefine national and subnational and local development targets pursuant to the NDC as reflected in the overarching policy and planning frameworks. So post NDC submission activities, action. So these actions means the six. A for the alignment with domestic development plans and national priorities. C, capacity enhancement and use of analytical tools. D, transparent and sustained reporting. So overall transparency. I, identification and mobilization of domestic and international climate finance. O, online database and development of climate statistics. And N, network building and stakeholder participation in the NDC implementation. So this is the NICTIS. So double hour showing the transparency between the basis for long-term development planning and inputs to climate reports. And in the NICTIS, the following are incorporated, the National GHG Inventory, Mitigation, MRV, Adaptation, m &E, Climate Finance, Climate Action Plans, Climate Reports. So our NDC is not um, merely a mitigation or adaptation compendium. It is investment strategy for the low carbon development. So this conveys that the Philippines uh, diligently access the means of implementation under the Paris Agreement, not only to, in order to implement these NDCs, but to achieve our aspirations to meet the national industrialization and Paris Agreement goals. Mabuhay Pilipinas, mabuhay mundo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richard Palmer, addressing your experience on developing indices and kind consideration. Even though our planned time has already ex ex exceeded, let us have a short, very short Q&A regarding uh, the country's presentation. Some of questions will be handled in the discussion session tomorrow. And first, I can see the question from Mongolia about the about Mr. Uh, Mr. Richards, and how yes. do you conduct a QA and QC plan? Uh, 
Can you repeat the question? Ah, okay. You can see the chat box, and uh, I... there is a question about uh, your country case. How do you conduct QA and QC plan? Uh, let me see in the chat box first. Uh, stop share. Mm. How I... do you conduct? So let me take note of this first. Uh, can I answer tomorrow since this uh, is over? Okay, okay. I will keep this question until tomorrow. So, and let's move to another question. I think there are four hours uh, about the Korea's case. So Professor Yu, if you're ready to answer, please share your opinion about this question. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll make my answer very short. And I have four questions, and the first two questions are related with the public hearing. And uh, when we set the national target, we also set the, the target uh, sector by sector and industry by industries. So when we have the, the public hearing, or, or some uh, connection, some interchange with the industry, then we have the, the, this kind of the, the, the hearing meeting in industry by industry. And also we include the, the NGOs and the labor unions. And at the same time, we also have the, the very massive the gathering of the, all the interested group uh, all together. And we hold those kind of the, the meeting two or three times. And usually it takes about at least six months for the public he hearing. And it is hosted by the, the prime minister's office and the Ministry of the in Environment and the, the GIR at the same time. And also, we, as I mentioned, we are setting the target for industry by industry and and the sector by sector. So when we have some very important response from the industry or other interested group, then we will do our best to setting to reflect those opinion in our uh, decision to set the national target. And the third question is related with the overseas emission credit. Uh, yes, we in, in our uh, national emission reduction target in 2030, we have the, the, some portion of the emission reduction on, from the, by acquiring the emission reduction credit from the, from the other countries. So we, uh, according to the rule, uh, described by the Article Six of Paris, Mont uh, uh, Paris uh, Agreement and the related uh, decisions, and also uh, the last question is the, the carbon emission per million one. But we, I have the data, uh, in, which is the ton of the CO two equivalent, equivalent per billion Korean one, which is about four hundred. That is my question, my answer. Thank you. I, I was also uh, the carbon emission is directly related with the GDP. Yes, it is, but the relation is, is decreasing. But still, the GDP is the key driver of the greenhouse gas emission in Korea. Thank you. Thank you for answering about the questions. Um, let's have an interactive discussion tomorrow. So if you have any questions regarding the presentation, you can you can express your questions uh, tomorrow tomorrow at, at the uh, discussion sessions. So uh, uh, the plan time is already exceeded. Let's wrap up the today's sessions. Thank you. Thank you all the speakers and participants. And I thank you for your kind consideration for the longer time than the scheduled time scheduled. Today's session has been very productive. Practical experiences and uh, lessons learned from the countries were very interesting, especially. But uh, due to the time limit, I won't go into the details about the, the 
presentation. I kindly ask you to participate tomorrow's session as well. All the speakers, including today's, are recommended to the present as a panelist of discussion sessions so we could deepen our knowledge and have an interactive dialogue regarding GHG inventory system and preparation and updating of the indices. Along with four more countries' presentation are scheduled tomorrow, Thailand, Pakistan, Singapore, and Nepal. Therefore, I look forward to meeting all of you again to get tomorrow at the same time. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. Bye -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you bye. for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank See you. you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Good one.